Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to talk about the cholera toxin, which is a bacterial toxin. Now, this cholera toxin, it is produced by the bacteria Vibrio cholerae. Now, this cholera toxin is a type of toxin which is also called the enterotoxin the enterotoxin uh, and this affects the intestine now cholerotoxin is also falling under the category of a special kind of toxin that is produced by the bacteria which is also called the AB type of toxin now what is AB type of toxin these toxins are basically having two different subunits, the subunit A and the subunit B. In cholera toxin, there are five B subunits and one A subunit. Together, it makes up the complete cholera toxin. Now, this B subunit or these five B subunits, they help in attachment of the toxin to the cell and the toxic property is present in the A subunit. Now that out of the way let's talk about the mechanism of action how cholera toxin works. To start off with the mechanism of action first the toxin it looks something like this if this is the a subunit it has got five b subunits and these five b subunit helps the toxin to get attached to a receptor on cell which is called the gm1 receptor so this is the receptor And it is called the GM1 receptor. This receptor is a gangliocyte, which is present on the cell membrane of the intestine. Now, what happens as the toxin gets attached to the GM1 receptor? This toxin is endocytosed. This toxin is endocytosed. and it comes into a vesicle and it comes into a vesicle uh, which contains which contains the gm1 receptor to which it was attached and this forms a vesicle now this endocytosed vesicle it fuses with an endosome and forms a phagosome. After the phagosome is formed, the phagosome along with the toxin, it comes and fuses, it comes and fuses with the ER. Let's say this is the ER. And it comes and fuses with the ER. Now, once it fuses uh, with the ER, what happens? The ER has transporters. The ER has transporters through which this A subunit moves into the cytosol. Now, after this A subunit moves into the cytosol, the A subunit attaches an ADP ribose to an amino acid on a G protein. So the A subunit goes and on a G protein, let's say this is the G protein 
and this A subunit, what it does, it modifies the G protein and attaches an ADP ribose. This process is called ADP ribosylation. Once the ADP ribose is attached to the G protein, what happens? The G protein is continuously in an activated state. Now, once this G protein is in an activated state, or let's say the G alpha subunit is in an activated state, this G alpha subunit goes and on the membrane there is there is uh, there is a protein which is called the adenylyl cyclase this is the adenylyl cyclase the activated g alpha goes to the adenylyl cyclase and activates the adenylyl cyclase Now, since the G-alpha is continuously active, the adenylyl cyclase also becomes continuously active. What happens? Adenylyl cyclase, what it does, it converts, it converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Now, this cyclic AMP, what it does, this cyclic AMP, it activates another protein kinase which is called PKA or protein kinase A. Now this protein kinase A in turn it activates transporters or channels on the cell membrane. It activates transporters or channels on the cell membrane. For example the transporter or channel which is CFTR. CFTR st stands for Cystic Fibrosis Transmembrane Conductance Regulator. So PK what it does, it uh, activates the CFTR and since there is continuous secretion of, uh, or continuous production of cyclic AMP, so PKA would be continuously activated and CFTR also would be continuously activated and this CFTR what it does it allows chloride ions and water molecules to move out of the cell and this is the reason why we see in case of uh, in case of cholera, in case of cholera patient, there is development of watery diarrhea. So this is because the CFTR is continuously activated and chloride ions and uh, water is moving out of the cell continuously and uh, that is coming out of the body. So this is how the cholera toxin it functions and it causes the watery diarrhea that we see as a consequence.